everyone is Byron. I'm here to testify for Jesus Christ. Today is February the 18th, 2020. This morning, a dream came to my remembrance as I was doing some breakfast. And then as a result of that, another dream came to my mind, some stuff that's come from the past that I've already posted here on YouTube. But I want to go back over them just to refresh and to maybe help someone else that hasn't seen either of the two. This is going to be a synopsis of the two and then a quick conclusion. In the first dream, I was shown a person that I went to high school with would be hiding people from persecution, hiding Christians from persecution. I live in the United States. Uh, I know it's coming. I've seen it too many times from the Lord. Uh, but this particular person was hiding people, much like uh, Rahab did the spies back in Jericho. Rahab lived in the wall or on the wall of Jericho. And in order for the spies to get down, they were lowered down from her window. And similarly, this person was hiding Christians on the second floor of an apartment building from people that were basically rounding up Christians for persecution. There's a lot of people in the world today who say that's going to be a tribulation and we're going to be raptured before the tribulation. However, Unfortunately, there's not going to be a rapture happen before what I'm talking about. Um, the rapture, the resurrection, the second coming of Christ will happen, but it's going to be after the tribulation of those days and mentioned by Jesus Christ and also uh, Paul. So I have proof or have a dream of Christian persecution, a person hiding them from Christians. Second thing was I had a dream where there was an invasion in the United States. Um, as I was having that dream, Jesus Christ was in the dream with me and telling me where to go. As a matter of fact, he said, I'll meet you at such and such place later. Scripture tells us that Jesus will be with us always, even to the end of the age or end of the world. No matter what's coming on us, no matter if it's persecution no matter if we're caught and persecuted, no matter if we are you know, called on to lose our life for Christ, he will be with us. He will lead us and guide us. We will perform the will of the Father. That's what the Garden of Gethsemane was all about. Jesus said, not my will, Lord, but thy will. And I'm just trying to um, stir that up in myself, that attitude. Um, I would like to help others to do that too, to keep that fresh in our minds that, um, you know, we had to count the cost in following Christ. Once you hook to the plow, you don't look back. Uh, count the cost now. Uh, a quick little story from my past that will be helpful to explain this. I was in the army. There came a time that we were called on to go to war. This particular time was for Operation Just Cause in Panama. I went to uh, Desert Storm, Desert Shield too. But in Just Cause in Panama, we had some guys that were there with us. And when they heard we were, this was really it, they didn't want to go. They were like, I, I didn't sign up to go to war. I just signed up to be in the army. Some people would be like, well, I signed up to be a Christian, but I didn't sign up to be a warrior. You know, you see the rela relationship? It, it makes no sense if you claim to have counted the cost, it makes no sense when the time comes for you to say, no, nah, I, I didn't sign up for this. Unfortunately, there's false gospels out there. There's even false Jesuses out there. There's a Jesus that says everything's going to be fine. There's a gospel that says everything will be sweet, or at least it'll be sweet until we are raptured. You know? Unfortunately, Scripture tells us the Antichrist will make war with the saints. And we need to be prepared for that war in the spiritual and also the physical. And I would just make a note, patience of the saints. It's mentioned a couple times in Revelation. This is the patience of the saints. And by patience, it was in essence mentioned in conjunction with scripture that, that pretty much said we're non-combatants in the physical. We may be combatants in the spiritual, but as far as, you know, uh, the physical, it pretty much to me reads like non-combatants. You can look up a phrase, and I'll put it at the end of this video. 
you look and praise uh, the patience of the saints who find their revelation. Uh, in one case, it's basically like he who goes into captivity will be taken captive, or you know, I'll, I'll put it up for you. But in both cases, it's pretty much we're non-combatant. So, just want to stir you up. Count the cost now. I, before I went into the military, I spent time. I took a piece of paper out, wrote pros and cons, what will I do, et cetera, et cetera. Just so happens in my second conflict that I was in, which was Desert Storm, Desert Shield, some people picked up my papers. My daughter, actually, she was about three years old. She walked into the living room area where my father, my mother, and my wife were sitting, handing them the papers. And, you know, as I was in combat, they were reading my decision-making process on paper to be in combat. And I recommend that same thing for you. Count the cost now. You know, if you're going to be worthy to be a soldier, count the cost because we're going to have to be soldiers for Christ. Uh, he will lead us and guide us. Whichever is our destiny, he's going to be with us until the end. And there is absolutely no better place to be than with Christ because no one can kill you in the second death. In the first death, Maybe they get lucky. In the second death, if they get lucky and you're um, a warrior for Christ and you're dying for the cause of Christ, you will rule and reign with Christ a thousand years. Plain and simple. Just check it out. So I'm going to let you go.